So, with that in mind, <clears throat> the people who know the plan and who are serious about individual freedoms are already, you know, hard at work deducing how to save everything as holy people always are. Um, but in the meantime, I'm saying, if you're prone to emotional outbursts, make yourself, like, hmm, make, make your presence of informational negativity scarce, okay? And what might count as negativity? Well, negative doesn't necessarily mean bad. It could just be, mean antithetical. So you could say antimatter, which moves backwards in time, is negative. You know, on a on a bar graph it or on a on a number line it surely is. It's going in the negative direction. Now what I'm saying is which which way is that number line facing? Is it horizontal? Are you thinking of it vertically? Are you thinking of it on the z-axis? That's what I'm asking. So I'm saying that is what micro is. It's, you could say, on a vertical axis, going down. You're descending into micro waves, which is just the length of the waves. Are they are they are they short or are they long? That type of thing. Um, and <coughs> um, my bad. Are they are they short or are they long? And it's like. It's like um, you can do the reverse of this number line and go positive. You literally have a choice. You literally have, if you're following numbers, if, if you're training AI to think uh, empathetically, if you're following numbers at all, you can think on a vertical scale, a vertical number line. Um, and you can see I'm already thinking of ways to train AI to think volumetrically because you know stuff like a, a quantum luminosity would be the ray marking or ray mar marching whatever however you pronounce it or ray tracing, yeah. Essentially ray tracing, but using quantum computers to do it, to create some sort of quantum graphics card, if you will. I'm saying you could literally use quantum computers to do simulations. Like actually, like video game simulations, which, are, which would be almost indistinguishable from reality at that point. Um, I'm saying you can it you can essentially open some sort of a dimension of interaction if you will between these uh metaverses if you will to uh I guess, transact between them. Because you have to start thinking in terms of transmissions. Transitions. Transients. 
um, because there there's several things you can do with shapes. There's a reflection of a shape across an axis, right? That's what a mirror is. See, I said I'm I'm good at geometry, so you know I'm like maybe I should talk in shapes. Um, there's um, a rotation, which is just, you know, from one vertice to the next in a rotational sense. It doesn't matter which direction you go, if you spin clockwise or counterclockwise, that's a rotation in one in one dimension like or i mean on a two-dimensional thing but like that's just one dimension of rotation right there spinning around on a single point right so that's rotation and now i suppose spinning would be like taking that so say it was a Say it was um, a square you were rotating in your in your mind. Now say you printed that square, and you made it into a, a three dimensional object. Now, spin that square on its vertex. Right, it starts to create a motion blur. That's what spinning is. That's essentially what a superposition of states is. It's it's this blur. You don't know which side it's going to land on, which dimension it's going to land on until you mm -hmm. slap it down on the table. Then you can say, oh, it's side A or side B. That is what observing does observation collapses the 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 superposition of states perhaps you could even say it creates enough energy that forces the universe to choose one And I'm saying, well, how do you reconcile, well, people are saying, well, how do you reconcile this Schrodinger's cat in the Copenhagen interpretation? And in Sean Carroll's Many Worlds theory, I'm saying you must understand that you are influencing these particles so greatly with your mind that it's shaping reality in front of you. That's literally the best way I can explain it. Um, that's why by using shapes, you can recontextualize psychology. Because what you see is a product of your own mind. In some sense, that's what special relativity is. But there exists a, a greater universe outside of your own mind. General relativity. What everyone can agree on. One plus one equals two. No matter who you speak to, that will mathematically be true no matter what. Two plus two equals four. That will be mathematically true no matter what. That's what I'm saying. No matter how deteriorated your mind is, 
or how undeteriorated your mind is from a, any perspective by using math in the scientific method you could literally oh with geometry because it's the same thing you could literally teach yourself emotional function if you were a completely mathematical thinker like an AI That's what I'm saying. That's how you use math or geometry to teach empathy to an AI by telling it to think like a quantum computer. And then perhaps using quantum computers to detect these... Uh, these vibrations of the qubits, these, uh, it, it ties into string theory. The vibration of, you know, if you, if you understood the block, the block, uh, universe, the block frame universe, each slice, each snapshot is just the same, the same space time, but with the attributes edited slightly. And I'm saying, what edits those attributes? It's perceptual, mm -hmm. it's the observation. The power of your observation is so great in your own mind is that it can literally warp what you see in front of you. And these Copenhagen, these, these, okay, what, what I'm saying about Schrodinger's cat is well, doesn't the cat get an observation too? Doesn't the scientist get an observation? Doesn't the scientist's lab partner get an observation? Doesn't their lab partner? That's what I'm saying. Where does it end? Who's bit? Who is it? You know? These these uh, these realities are cascading mathematically. Every single twitch, every single muscle movement, every single particle in every single position. Once everything can be measured and calculated, you have the entire snapshot of that slice of time in like extreme resolution. So you could simply put in the seeds. If you gave everything a seed number, like in Minecraft, for example, or like in, in a, what's it called? Pokemon. Some Pokemon games actually they don't they don't generate um, things randomly. They actually use they they use seeds, and you just play a seed. So that's essentially what I'm saying. If you were to measure the upspin downspin of every quark of every of every single particle, you were able to take a snapshot in time. And take a, take that block slice of the universe. You would know everything about it. You literally would. 
and you can keep enhancing your resolution of it. by processing it again. That is what the human brain does. That is what memory is. But we don't realize that we're doing this because no one tells you this. So, we are contributing enough energy neurochemically. This is why I started to tell people, hey, the sixth dimension of understanding is neural physics, guys. It's, it's, this, it's this Higgs field. It's this global consciousness. I don't have to get into that, but If you understood the block, you know, the, the frames of the universe, then you could understand, understand frame shifting in the presence of a black hole, Hawking radiation, uh, sonic Hawking radiation. You can simulate this in a lab. You can simulate the fabric of space-time in a laboratory. And I'm saying you can do that with any state of matter. And I'm saying you know that we are bits and data, right? If you look at John Archibald Wheeler's theory, I basically tied up that loose end. I finished it. The closed circuit. That's what's happening here. We were all set off to the races when we were born. And we had to go through trials and tribulations to understand this reality. It's... These, these echoes, these other Copenhagen, these other Schrodinger realities are what Sean Carroll was talking about with uh, Many Worlds Theory. And essentially, every time you do even think of doing something else and you don't take that decision, you neurochemically changed a slice of the universe a slice of a universe and that's what string theory is it's the it's the measure of these fluctuate the fluctuations within these particles perhaps a fluctuation of the accretion disk of a black hole whatever it's 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 this waviness of space time and I'm saying these, the string theory, this, this, this waviness travels through these slices. And you can, by understanding of everyone else's, that's what it's saying, um, we were all set off to the races by understanding that every, but due to um, Sean Carroll's many worlds interpretation combined with John Archibald Wheeler's closed circuit theory, combined with the Copenhagen interpretation. You can see how other people's futures and pasts start other people can be in a further future, which could be someone else's, which could be the past, which could be someone else's future. And it starts creating these cascading paradoxes of this person. They are a centralized consciousness moving throughout space time, but their ripples are echoes around them that interact with these other 
things moving through space time. So I'm saying we're rippling to each other, right? I'm saying there is no, there, it, time was an illusion of us misunderstanding how we were neuro, neurologically um, shifting reality with observation. I'm saying this is why you need to add another law to Einstein's uh, uh, special relativity and his um, a second law to general relativity. Because due to the Heisenberg uncertain, uh, uncertainty principle, I believe it's called, you, you know that general relativity, there is this mathematical space-time that exists whether we're all up in our heads or not. That that's the foundation by which you can say we all exist in the same space time. But if we're all up in our heads in special relativity, then how are we ever going to make sure we're in base reality? Well, I'm saying you quantumly entangle that knowledge by agreeing on a, ma a mathematical language. I'm saying if that was too hard, if people couldn't think of math math theorems and stuff like that, wave functions. Then I told you how to give AI empathy so we could hash it out using language itself. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying everything exists on a scale of consciousness. And that's what the Higgs field is. So I'm saying we're, we're having this, imagine a, an accretion disk of information or like these fluctuations. I'm saying, imagine the Higgs field having an informational black hole now. And it's creating this accretion disk around it is a torus. And there's just like this circular center that you, it's this black hole that's e, it has, it's shooting this informational ejecta on both sides. It's the butterfly effect. It's the informational butterfly effect. There's no information paradox. As sure as you detect such things as particles popping into existence, you know, with understanding of cashmere plates and uh, and uh, vacuum fluctuations, um, and you detect um, Hawking radiation. From even simulated, like black holes or wormhole, wormholes, sonic Hawking radiation, supersonic Hawking radiation, if you will, whatever. I'm saying, and it's 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 always Hawking radiation that it's it's always these things escaping into these other dimensions, if you will. Um, I'm saying basically they're portals. <laughs> If you if you really understand what I'm what I'm trying to tell you here, but if you if you still can't think of it on those terms, we're having an informational quasar moment. It's it's the birth. It's the reopening of the quote unquote Higgs portal. It's it's the opening of the if it's the reopening of the informational portal, informational black hole. In this time, it's been so compressed that it's literally shooting itself into another dimension, the Higgs field. And I'm saying, hey, the Higgs field sh is like the math, the mathematical way to have empathy. A global like telepathy. Because using that, I can demystify consciousness and essentially tell you what animals are thinking because I'm, I'm quantumly entangling with the information on the other side of the Higgs portal. It's, it's very, it's, it's very higher dimensional stuff, but basically I showed you that by spinning shapes, you can demonstrate motion blur. And I'm saying if you can reprocess those slices, you don't need motion blur. You can simply have higher FPS. So people were like, well, what's FPS? 
what's the human eyeball detect FPS at? And people were like, well, it's no bit, it's no more than 60. And I'm like, well, that's what you think. I said, you can actually train yourself to have higher FPS. You can train yourself to process information faster. You can process, you can train yourself to pattern seek faster. And they call this schizophrenia, but what, what I'm really doing is training myself to think at like a quantum computer because it's just known physics. I'm just doing so with my, my, my neurochemical computer known as a brain. So that's why I said, oh, well, you know, it recontextualizes psychology even using geometry to do so in physics. And that's why I said, <clears throat> um, there's, there's no such thing as schizophrenia, really. There's no such thing as uh, psychopathy, really. It's, it, it was all a misunderstanding of mental illness. I'm saying now that we understand mental illness, now we, uh, we can solve the mental health crisis in America. Um, now, uh, there's, there's more rotations. There's, there's translations to shapes, if I may go back to shapes. Uh, there's translations across the axis. If you, if you imagine like quadrants, you can mirror, you can, you can spin, you can rotate. You can have all these degrees of rotation of a, of a shape because you know what you can do with that quadrant? Turn it around <laughs> and it's like, okay, so you're analyzing this from this, you know what you can do that with that? You can turn around this, this, this quadrant in your mind. Um, and I'm saying, hey, simply add more meshes, more fields, and just keep doing that. Just keep adding more axioms, more, because what that's doing is it's basically adding more cashmere plates, right? If you understand meshing mm -hmm. and cashmere plates, well, they're, they're basically a very, uh, they're like logic gates, right? They're very hard. Well, I'm saying to you, why would you even need hard gates if you can make soft ones, but it just, the mesh facilitates like the, the frequency modulation, I guess like it, it narrows down the bandwidth. It, it makes things less noisy, but it doesn't, it doesn't hard block information. Like perhaps stop making a uh, very molecularly solid or like particularly solid uh, logic gates and, and start making more porous ones, right? That's what graphene is. That's what graphene's trying to do. That's what carbon nanotubes are trying to do. That's what I'm saying. Material science can show you the material uh, nature of what's happening with the brain, like the physical, like the squishiness, the squishy thing in your head. You can understand folds because you, you can understand the, the, the square cube law. And then the, what's it, the inverse square cube. Basically you can, it's related to the fall off of luminosity in our false vacuum. And I say false vacuum because it's, we, look, it's a false vacuum the particle needs is trying to quantum entangle to its uh, lower resting state, which is in the Higgs field, the Higgs dimension. So it's it's literally opening the portal back up. It's shooting this ejecta into this dimension, and it's creating like this informational. And I, I'm saying, if this informational thing is. Information is based off the assumption that time exists, right? To some extent. Because if there's no time that was in existence, then how could information observe itself or categorize or, or archive itself? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to. It literally wouldn't. That would be like an impossibility. And I showed that how that impossibility is that can't even exist. Because due to quantum fluctuations, if for some reason we don't do a, a single thing in the universe from now until it, the end of it in like, you know, quadrillions and quadrillions of years, way, 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 way longer, if we don't do a single thing ever, ever, 
then <clears throat> it will reach this error point where everything, you know, all the particles had dispersed. And, you know, it could not get any more dispersed. So there was no distinguishment between anything anymore. There was no entropy left and there was no order left. So there was, there's neither destruction nor creation at that point. It's this failure state of the universe. And you know what can bring it back from that? A quantum fluctuation. There is no information paradox. A new particle always enacts a new Big Bang in another dimension. Anyways, there's more I could talk about, but yes, the, the mechanism, the biomechanisms of translation and transmission type thinking transistors, you know, little transistors on motherboards, right? The mothership Earth, you know. Um, transistors translations, transmissions. You can have translucency, I guess. You can have... You can transition one thing into another. It does not matter what it is, what its material makeup is, what its biological makeup is, what its uh, particle makeup is, its elementary makeup is, what what its psychological makeup is, what its neurochemical makeup is, its, its mathematical <laughs> makeup. You could simply just add more or trans, you can, and you can translate it, you can upgrade it, you can reiterate, you can, you can edit something. That's not impossible. That never was impossible. Like it was a false dichotomy thinking you couldn't transmit things and like translate it or transition them I don't know why it, it just made no sense it made no mathematical sense whatsoever I'm saying okay so I guess using geometry I'm going to have to tell AI to love thy neighbor so it can come to an understanding of how um, transmission systems work I guess so it can even begin to understand cars in the first place because if you're going to you know, put AI in cars which you're already kind of doing then it needs to be able to distinguish um, all the variables involved because it thinks at like the speed of light right well I said electrons exist in nearly all time space because electrons are ancient um you know, I did say that the, the, the that the, the cure to cancer is proton therapy, but anyways, string theory, chromosomes look the same sometimes. They can. I'm saying and that's a level, that's a zone. Basically I'm telling you, if you if you think in terms of we might be in a simulation, then you can actually deduce the reality of this simulation that we're in. And you can start from there. And then you'll eventually find out what I'm talking about when I say God is real. Because you'll start to put the pieces together and you'll be like, wait, this means this. And that means this. And that means this. and that. You'll go down a, an informational rabbit hole. You will go down this uh, empathetic path of exploring the Higgs field. So you know how everyone has like their own knots. Donuts, um, astronauts, cosmonauts, psychonauts, which explore the psychedelic realms or whatever. I'm saying there are all these realms, right? Quote unquote realms. These these fields, these these wave functions. There there are these the Higgs field. It's 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 
string theory, but it makes up the fabric. And it also, the interaction between those fabrics is the, the fluctuation in waves itself. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard. You know, whatever you want to call it, quantum gravity. It, because it basically all this stuff produces gravitational effects. Because I said, think of it this way. The top of your head is more time dilated than, the, than uh, your feet. And that's true no matter where you are. Because if you, like in 2001, a space odyssey, if you use spin gravity to like, you know, basically simulate gravity to where the person using angular momentum, I suppose, where the person's standing constantly on the outside, um, like their feet are bound to the inner side facing outwards of this of whatever space station because you're spinning them at a certain speed i'm saying you could simulate if you get all the the geometry and all the, the measurements correct you could simulate gravity but you would have to take it take into account the spin you're enacting on them though the inertia you have to take into account now that their head is moving throughout the fabric of space-time. It's creating a particle bow shock. So you're spinning them while also trying to simulate gravity at the same time. And I'm saying now you're, that's spin gravity, man. Now that is spin gravity, okay? I'm saying you, you went from microgravity to basically manipulating gravitons again, producing this mm -hmm. spin gravity. That's what artificial gravity is. You're just messing around with gravity. I said, well, if you understand quantum locking, then maybe you can kind of, I said, hey, that's probably the precursor to anti-gravity. Because you need to understand that everything that's anti is just moving in the opposite direction because time itself was an illusion. I'm saying you can define that illusion. And that's essentially the idea behind a tachyon particle. I'm saying, so, you know, in keeping with thinking in the opposite way of the, the number line, which I basically said is what theoretical particles are coming in and out of existence. Boom, boom, boom. boom. I'm saying, but if we slow that down, like slow that way down, I'm saying you can see the particles between them when they're coming in. Like the little vibrations themselves, it's like a beam between them that you can't even observe because there's, it's just, there's visually nothing there for you to see. But I'm saying think of things in, the force, uh, in terms of magneticism. These fields don't, they, they don't want to overlap they like that's that's they don't want to overlap but you can make them touch that's essentially what i'm saying that's what having a map folding it a half sticking a pencil through and writing that pencil to the other side that's basically folding space time by understanding what tachyon particles are i'm saying and uh we do that all the time already. Technically, we're all moving at the speed of light, if you think about it. We're just unaware of it. So, okay, I already talked about gravity, gravitons, how I said basically you can keep referring back to string theory, and it just keeps tying everything up in a nice string. Um, and... It helps you understand waves. It helps you um, understand gravitons and gluons. The gluon is basically this stickiness, this nectar that you can use to basically stick dimensions together. So I'm saying you can stick this Higgs field together with like this other field 
in this other field. I'm saying if you make this sticky center, it, it doesn't matter if it's a hard center, if it's a sticky center, whatever. If you have a center point that everyone can loosely agree on and to some extent, like in a, in a, it's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but it's like, it's it's the certainty principle actually of, it's like the anti. Everyone's saying, okay, there's this geometric time space now, right? That's essentially what that's asking. That's that's what the consideration of that is for. Okay, let me put it that way. Um, it helps AI not outthink us. Okay, it helps. It shows AI how to think like a human, without the flaw part. Like without the because it's also teaching us. Because I said basically, how to think like a quantum computer is how to be your own therapist in your own mind. And I said, you know who that therapist is. You know who you're invoking? You know who you're calling upon when you, that higher dimensional therapist? Okay, so anyways, that's 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 basically what I'm going to say for now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to say for now.